فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم اوكي ان شاء الله تعالى the author then goes on to the al-qa'idatul arba'un the 40th qa'ida al-qa'idatu al-arba'un the 40th qa'ida and that qa'ida is ya'taqiduna ahl al-sunnah wal jama'ah they believe and siyasat al-nas the governing of the people and running the affairs of the people is obligatory. يجب أن تكون وفق كتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. It has to be in accordance to the kitab and the sunnah. أهل السنة والجماعة believe that if you want to control the people's affairs, سياسة الناس, which سياسة is politics. But the word siyasa in the Arabic language is actually to run something. Okay, it's to govern something. It has to be in accordance to the kitab and the sunnah wa fahmi salaf al-salih and the understanding of the pious predecessors. فَلَا يُبِيحُونَ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ بِحُجَّةِ تَيْسِيرِ عَلَى النَّاسِ And they don't make permissible that which Allah made haram so they can just make it easy for the people. They don't. أو كَسْبِ Or to attain the people's emotions. Or to, at, or to they don't make the haram permissible for the people on the grounds that they want to reach a manasib, meaning they want to reach positions. So they say this haram is now halal because we have to get to this position. And also, um, dropping the desires. And of course, these media outlets as well. So this qa'id is very important. We find many people whose politics is based upon this is what their, ba their politics is upon. What's their politics based upon? It is based upon to make permissible for the people, to make permissible for the people that which Allah made haram because they just want to make matters easy for the people. At taysiru al nas, make matters easy for the people. And they want to gain the majority. We want number, we want people to be on our side, we want to be, to people to be with us. So it's all about the numbers and the, and the, and the followers. That's why that's what they do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran, Allah also says, وَلَوْلَا أَن ثَبَّتْنَاكَ لَقَدْ كِدْتَ تَرْكًا وَإِلَيْهِمْ شَيْئًا قَلِيلًا إِذَا لَأَذَقْنَاكَ ضِعْفَ الْحَيَاةِ وَضِعْفَ الْمَمَاتِ ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُ لَكَ عَلَيْنَا نَصِيرًا وَأَنِحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ Judge them. Allah says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 49, Allah says, وَأَنِحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ Judge the people based on what? بما أنزل الله that which Allah has sent down سبحانه وتعالى ولا تتبع أهواءهم don't follow the people's desires. نبي الله محمد when you're judging the people judge them based on what Allah has sent down and don't follow their desires. وحذرهم and be cautious of and يفتنوك that the people they cause you fitna عن بعض ما أنزل الله إليك on some of the things which Allah has sent on you. فإن تولوا فَعَلَمْ أَنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ يُصِيبُمْ بِبَعْضِ ذُنُوبِهِمْ If they turn around and leave you, and they walk away from you, then what you need to know is 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to afflict them with some of their own sins. And a lot of the people are fasiqun, they are transgressors, those who exceed their limits. So Allah tells the Prophet to what? When you're judging the people, judge them based on what? Bima anzal Allah, that which Allah sent down. So the judge has to be based on the kitab and the sunnah. It can't be based on what? It can't be based on the people's desires. And you find people whose da'wah today is about pleasing the people. Following the people's desires. Your job as a da'i is not to please the people. You're not allowed to and you should not please the people. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, كانت بنو إسرائيل تسوسهم الأنبياء بني إسرائيل, they used to be run by their prophets. بني إسرائيل, prophets would come and run their affairs. كلما هلك نبي, every time a prophet died, خلفه نبي, another prophet would come and take their place. وإنه لا نبي بعدي The Prophet said, there is no prophet after me. وَسَيَكُونُ خُلَفَاء فَيَكْثُرُونَ After me, there's going to become a lot of khulafa leaders. And they're going to become large in number. The companions, they said, قَالُوا فَمَا تَأْمُرُونَا What do you command us, O Messenger of Allah? Then the Prophet وسلم, he says, فَوَابِ بَيْعَةِ الْأَوَّلِ فَالْأَوَّلِ وَاعْطُوهُمْ حَقَّهُمْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَائِلُهُمْ عَمَّ اسْتَرْعَاهُمْ Give pledge of allegiance one after the other. Give them their rights. For verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask that leader the day of judgment, the rights that was placed over him. So what is it that is upon each and every one of us when running people's affairs that it's done based on the kitab and the sunnah? Al-Qa'idatu al-Hadiya wal-Arba'oon The 41st Qa'ida أنهم يرون أهل السنة والجماعة they see أن من وسائل الشرعية the means that are legislated in the شريعة في الدعوة إلى الله when calling to Allah is مخاطبة الناس to address and speak to the people على قدر أفهامهم أهل السنة والجماعة believe that the legislated means when doing دعوة is speaking to the people in accordance to their understanding and their comprehension and their positions وَأَنَّ تَوْحِيدَ الْخِطَابِ لِلنَّاسِ فِي غَيْرِ فُرُوضِ الْأَعْيَانِ لَيْسَ مَنْهَجًا رَبَّانِيًا And also, uniting the speech of the people, bringing the people and uniting them in things that are not obligatory, is not a prophetic methodology, it's not a godly path. Allah says in the Qur'an, أُدْعُوا إِلَىٰ سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَوْعِظَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنِ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ ضَلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِالْمُهْتَدِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also says, وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِّنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوِ الْقَوْفِ أَدَاعُوا بِهِ وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُنِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ وَلَوْ لَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ لَاتَّبَعْتُمُ الشَّيْطَانَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Allah says, call to the path of your Lord with wisdom, with hikmah, wal mawidatil hasana, wajadil hum. The people that you're giving da'wah are three types. Memorize this. The people that you're calling Allah to are three types. The first one is a person who's very kind, he's a miskin person, he's a simple person. He doesn't require too much arguments and debates, and he doesn't need that from you. He's a simple person. The way you give da'wah to that person is what? Bil hikmah, with wisdom. He doesn't even probably, you know what that person? He doesn't even probably need you to speak to him. He just wants somebody to talk to. He just wants a friend. All you need to do is just become friends with them. Say, look, I'm going to take you out today. How about we go eat together? You buy them food, and you say, whoa, isn't it this Friday? Yeah, it is. You know what? I'm going to buy you eat clothes. Simple stuff like that that you do for them, and that's it. He... He's already practicing now, just because of those good actions that you did. You don't need to speak to them. You just have to have wisdom in the way you deal with them. 
You just have to have wisdom. They're just a simple person. The second type of person is a person who requires wisdom and reminder. Both. He needs a reminder to come with it as well. He needs you to say, Akhi, what's wrong? Why are you doing this? May Allah elevate your status. I know you intend good, but do you think it's permissible for you to do this? <coughs> Maybe it's, do you, don't you think it's because of the person you're hanging around with that this, that's affecting you like this? Maybe you should change your environment. I think so. And one of the best reminders to give to people who you think is to not be direct at times. Don't be direct. Question them. Just ask questions. Questions is what makes people uncomfortable. It makes them uncomfortable in the sense where they start questioning themselves then. So you say, mm, do you think that was a good thing to do? No? Yes? No? Yes? The person say, mm, you're right, maybe it wasn't. But you didn't say anything, you just asked them a question. The reason why it's good to ask questions is because it gives the person the right to speak. And humans love to explain themselves, right? But if you strip that right from him and you say, you're wrong, what you did is wrong, you shouldn't have done that. It makes the person become what? Defensive and it makes a person argue and it makes a person feel like their right has been taken away from them sah? But when you ask questions, it's one of the best ways to get through to a person's mind Are you there? Just ask the question Do you think what you did was uh, uh, The best of the choices that you could have done? Yeah, it's true. I should have done that, right? Mm. They'll think like that they might even say to you, yeah, it was the right thing I should have done. Okay. Okay. And they'll say, what, did you think it was wrong? Oh yeah, I mean, we might differ on it. Then a dialogue opens like that. A discussion starts. So one of the best ways is istifham. That's what Allah asks in the Quran many places. أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافِ الْعَبْدَةِ It's been used a lot. Allah asks questions. The answer is already in the question, which is a yes. Of course. But Allah asks, and it's a way to make the person think. It's one of the best ways to make people, to address, to bring matters to, the, to their minds. So reminder, that's the second type of person. The third type of person, he is وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي يَحْسَنْ Debate with them. This is a stubborn person, argumentative individual. He or she is very, very stubborn. They need debate, discussion. Okay, bring your proofs. I'll bring my proofs. Hey, you would, where did you get that from? Who preceded you in that? That person needs a bit of... They, reminder doesn't benefit them. And hikmah doesn't benefit them. They're the type of people who believe, don't, black, you know, don't emotionally blackmail me. Convince me. Convince me what, it, what you're saying is right. They like that. Convince me. So you say, okay. Are you with me? Now, what is wrong is when you're giving da'wah to confuse the people. A person who doesn't want to argue with you. A person who doesn't want all of that. Who you could have just given him a nice smile and that would, have, that would have been your way to tell them something. You say you start debating with them. You start debating with You bring about more harm. Do you get my point now? Do you now have you categorized the people into three? If you get one wrong with the other, it's a problem. What about if the first type of person, which is just wisdom that you needed, if you argue with them, what's going to happen? That's not who they are, that's not, who, that's not their character. They don't like argument. You'll shut them down. You'll shut them down. Sah? As for the one who is debatative, argumentative, if you use wisdom with him, or you use what you call it, as I said, mawida, reminder, would that benefit him? So, you know. That's why there's a, there's a qa'idah, according to the scholars, it's called mura'at muqtad al which is to observe the person that you're addressing. And they also say, طُعْمُ kibar سُمُّ الصِّغَارِ طُعْمُ kibar means what? The food of the elders is, is poisonous to the young kids. صح? The food that you would enjoy and you would eat is poisonous to the child. A newborn baby can't eat chicken filet burger. صح? He'll die from it. You see? But that child would love to eat what is known as what? SMA gold or cow and gates, you know? That's it, that child is done, good, pleased, happy. So the information that you give to a group of people, you shouldn't give it to another group of people here. Sah? 
Are you with me, brothers and sisters? So within the religion, there are masail topics that are not brought out to the public. It's called withholding that information because of the, the catastrophe and the, the mindsets of the people can't comprehend it. وَلِذَلِكَ Bukhari narrated in his Kitab al-Ilm بَابُ مَنْ خَصَّ بِالْعِلْمِ قَوْمًا دُونَ قَوْمٍ كَرَاهِيَةَ أَلَّا يَفْهَمُوا Bukhari chapter the Bab and he called it specifying knowledge to a group of people over another group of people in fear of what? Not them being able to understand it. And then he brings a statement of Ali ibn Abi Talib where he said حَدِّثُ النَّاسَ بِمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَتُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُكَذَّبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Speak to the people and tell them what they can understand. Uh, do you want them to disbelieve in Allah and His Messenger? Tell the people what they can understand. Now some people say to you, Akhi, don't talk about Tawheed because the people... No. Are you with me? When, when we said right now, Ali ibn Abi Talib is talking about what? He's talking about the three categories that we already mentioned. Observe that. Are we, are we together, brothers and sisters? Ali ibn Abi Talib is saying, حَدِّثُ النَّاسَ بِمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَتُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُكَذَّبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ He means the one who is simple, talk to him in a simple way. The one who wants a reminder, give him the reminder. The one who wants to argue, argue. Don't mix one with the other. Speak to everybody at his level. Are you with me? When you talk to your ch children, do you speak the same way to your parents? Do you speak to the same way to your parents? No, you don't. Everybody, you talk to them differently. Okay, this is not called split personality. Yeah? It's not called split personality. It's observing each person you're talking to. And you all know this famous hadith that the Prophet ﷺ told Mu'ad. He said, Ya Mu'ad, O oh Mu'ad. He said to him, The people you're going to come are a people of the scripture. I mean, you're not going to go to people who are jahil, who have no knowledge. No, no. These people have books and they read their books. So when you go, be ready. Think of what you say to those people. You need to be prepared for these people. They're not... And nowadays when you, go to, when you watch people go to Hyde Park, this is the problem that you find in the Da'wah in Hyde Park. Sah brothers, what is the problem? They're not able to distinguish who they're talking to. They can't. Are you with me? I ask you by Allah, how many people is, is Islam as a religion? Is it a religion that came that, that brings its issues forward all by debate? Does it? It doesn't. I'll tell you guys a story. Abd, Sheikh Abdul Razak ibn Abdul Muhsin al Abbad, Hafizahullah. He authored a book called, Sheikh Abdul Razak wrote a book called Al uh, Dua'i wal Athkar, where he talks about dua and he talks about the Athkar. You know, dua, supplication, and he talks about dhikr. I read that book and I read it many times. And I even covered it with some brothers, studied it with them. That book in details. We finished it, we started and we finished it. It's an amazing book. It talks about the adhkar, it talks about the dua, and it it's an amazing book. I took that book and I studied it. And I read it many times, more than 10 times to be honest. But I saw the author of that book himself. He came to a city in which we were at in Ha'il. He came and visited us. My wife and I was there. He gave us a talk called at tawakkul Remember, right? Yeah, Tawakkul. In the Jam al Raj, he came. My wife was upstairs and I was downstairs. He gave us the talk. Maghrib Salah came in. I was right next to him. Salatul Maghrib came in. And he was next to me. I saw him lift his hands up when the Adhan went off. The Imam made the Adhan for Salatul Maghrib and he lifted his hand up. And I could see him make dua. It touched me so much. It affected me greater than the book I read. Are you with me, brothers? It really affected me. Seeing him right now in front of me, the Sheikh himself, and making dua and supplicating to Allah, it touched me far more than reading the book itself. To be honest, I will lie. It did. And so this is something that you need to realize. 
that when the Prophet taught the companions, his teaching was, was from different angles. Debate was there, discussion was there, practical stages and examples were there. Are you with me, brothers? That's what they got from him. They got a whole way of studying. He was teaching them from different, many angles. He was, te he was teaching them through the way he spoke, the way he talked, the way he walked, the way he spoke, the dialogues that he had, the information he gave to them, the narrations that he, all of that was way. Nowadays, like in, the religion has become restricted to just debate and argument. And that's a very, very weak way of looking at the deen. Are you with me? Because what happens is that you're now going to dismiss the vast majority of people who would have just taken the religion without a debate and argument. So, who would have taken it from you just by seeing the character, the maturity, the way things are being done, the way you handle things, all of that is not there. So, you dismiss those people. You've marginalized them. You've not given them what they wanted. So, that's why it's very important. And that's why the da'wah that you give has to be uh, it has to be that vast and it has to be that broadened, that, you know, broadened. Al-Qa'idah al-Thaniya wal arbaun The 42nd 42nd Qa'idah أنهم يحذرون من مشابهة الكفار أهل السنة والجماعة they warn against imitating the kuffar واتباع السبيل واتباع سبيلهم and following the path of the disbelievers the أهل السنة they warn against the people they say don't follow the path of the disbelievers don't imitate them because Allah said in the Quran كالذين من قبلكم كانوا أشد منكم قوة وأكثر أموالا وأولادا فاستمتعوا بخلاقهم فاستمتعتم بخلاقكم كما استمتع الذين من قبلكم بخلاقهم وخضتم كالذي خاضوا أولئك حبطت أعمالهم في الدنيا والآخرة وأولئك هم الخاسرون In this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that كَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ And those who came before you, they were more stronger than you guys. كَانُوا أَشَدَّ مِنْكُمْ قُوَّةِ وَأَكْثَرَ أَمْوَالًا وَأُولَادًا Allah is saying to us here, people listen, the previous nations who disobeyed Allah, who were destroyed, are even stronger than you guys. Do you know how big the people of Ad was? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say? كَأَنَّهُمْ they are like what? What's the ayah? كَأَنَّهُمْ وَالْفَجْرُ وَالْيَالٍ عَشْرِ وَالشَّفْعِ وَالْوَتْرِ وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا يَسْهَلْ فِي ذَلِكِ خَسَمُ الَّذِي حِجْرِ أَلَمْ تَرَى كَيْفَ رَأَى عَلَى وَبُكَ بِعَادِ إِرَى مَدَاتِ الْعِبَادِ أَلَّتِي لَمْ يُخْلَقْ مِثْلُهَا فِي الْبِلَادِ أَلَّتِي لَمْ يُخْلَقْ مِثْلُهَا فِي الْبِلَادِ Allah says we've never created anyone like them. We did not create anything like them. كَأَنَّهُمْ نَخْلُ كَأَنَّهُمْ كَأَنَّهُمْ they are like trees. When they when they got when they got destroyed, Allah says like they were palm trees that were flown thrown on the floor. Look how tall and how big they were. Rather, some of the historians they brought that their hair was as big as the palm trees. Their hair, one of their hairs was as big as the palm trees that we have today. Big people. They used to live in caves, you know that, right? They used to build it with their own hands. They used to carve through the cave mountains and live inside mountains. That's what their houses were. What do we use to, 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 to carve mountains? Who can, do, who can you carve a mountain with your own hand? They used to do it with their own hands. Yeah, these people were big. When they got destroyed, Allah destroyed them. With his, how quick would you be destroyed? You're already close to the ground. So, are you with me, brothers? They say short people, if they fall, it doesn't hurt them as much as tall people when they fall, right? Because tall people when they fall, it's like, you know, the Eiffel Tower fell. Are you with me, brothers? That's how much we suffer. Yeah? But the short people, they're just close to the ground. It's like, you know, 
They did ruku'ah. Yeah. The point is though, Allah destroyed them. He said, if I can destroy them, then definitely everybody who came, Allah can destroy them subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah told, the Prophet sallallahu told us, لَتَأْخُذُنَّ كَمَا أَخْذَتِ الْأُمَمِ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ ذِرَاعًا بِذِرَاعٍ وَشِبْرًا بِشِبْرٍ وَبَاعًا بِبَاعٍ حَتَّى لَوْ أَنَّ أَحَدًا مِنْ أُولَٰئِكَ دَخَلَ جُحْرَ ضَبٍ لَدَخَلْتُمُوهُ The Messenger told us that you will follow the previous nations before you. You will follow them so much so ذِرَاعًا بِذِرَاعٍ An arm span, huh? And shibran bi shibrin, you four step, four fingers, dira like this, hand span, okay. Wa ba'an bi hatta law width, height, all of it you would follow them, till the Prophet has said that if they go into the hole of a lizard, you will try to go in there with them, the disbelievers. That's how much you follow them. <laughs> Today, look at the, people, the way we dress, the way we talk. Whatever they do is its, its style. It's what? It's style. It is style. Billahi alaykum Kardashian, Kardashian, woman. This woman, Kim Kardashian. Mashdahara, she did not become famous except through what? The most filthiest manner. This is how she became famous. You go to Muslim countries today, Muslim countries. The women of those countries like Dubai, even Saudi, the women there are what? They've made themselves look like her. They go to the, what do you call it, uh, salon, they go to the makeup places and they make their style exactly like her. If you look at the youngsters today whose trousers are sagging, is it still the same? They still do that? Whose trousers are sagging. If you look at the history of how it came about, it is people who were in prison, who, you know, their belts was taken from them, and etc. There's many stories that are mentioned that they, weren't, they were taken from them so they can't run fast. Can't escape from the guards and everything. Others mention no, it's because of sexual harassment and the reason why their trousers went in prison. A big guy standing next to you, you can see his pants, his underwear. It's like what on earth? How how much? How serious can somebody take you? Pull up your trousers, man. Why are you showing your bumps, to people? But where did this come from? It's a style. It's a style. They saw a Kathir do it. Everyone's doing it. No one asks questions. It is so bad. Well, I remember a time where people were wearing baggy trousers. Baggy trousers. That was what the style was. Now you see guys wearing tight trousers. They can't even walk properly. The legs are all crossed into each other. There's like the guy's falling over. He's tripping himself up. Brothers, he's tripping himself up. His trousers is so tight. How is it something that you one time saw to be gay, you say, to wear tight trousers? Now it's the style, brother. You are the one who doesn't understand what style is about. This is what life is sad. It is truly sad. Sisters are followed. And you know what's sad? These hadith are mentioning following the kuffar. But wallahi is not just following kuffar. It is following the worst of theirs. The Aradil, the lowest ranked ones. It's not even following businessmen, the, the, the ones who've made money, CEO, imitating them, walking like that. You're following criminals, thugs, alcoholics. That's the people you're following. You see as a role model. It's sad. Even the kuffar within themselves say, well, who is this guy? What's he about? They don't even take him serious. The kuffar within themselves don't take these individuals serious. Muslims who Allah has given them Islam and Iman are following the lowest ranked people, people who've become famous through the worst industries. One time I remember um, uh, I was reading an article, uh, somebody sent me a, uh, what's it called, uh, they sent me a, a link to a, a Lebanese woman who went into porn, porn, porn industry and 
it said Muslim. So they sent it to a Muslim woman. I was shocked. I, I pressed it. So I looked at it. We read the, I'm reading and reading, reading it. So I come to, when I finish reading it, I'm like, Billah. I come to the bottom. I said, probably this woman's a Rafidi, Shi'i, something like that. She can't be a Muslim because Lebanese is a lot of Rafidah. The point is, I read the bottom part, comments on the uh, newsletter. I was reading the comments section. And when I read it, I saw Muslims saying, Akhi, brothers, fear Allah, she's still a human at the end of the day. Like, proper, like, please understand, you know, you don't know her situation, you don't know her story. Uh, justifying everything, everything is justified. Do you get my point, brothers? It's sad. It's a sad reality that a person living. Especially emails that come through when you read some of the emails. Okay, what's this email about? And Imran shows you some of the emails and he says to you, this, this, I, need, I need an answer for this email. You check it. Some of them you think it's a movie. You think this can't be real. You know, pinch, your, pinch yourself back to reality. The things that are being, the kind of emails that you're reading, uncomfortably, on a regular basis. It's sad. All of that is because things that the Sharia are saw to be serious. Who today when zina is mentioned fears like wow, wow, zina, a'udhu billah. Who really thinks that today? When you read the emails and you read the people's comments, it's nothing. They make you question yourself, you're like wow, I need to think, am I not, am I not really, is my brain gone, have I lost my brain? It's normal, everybody's like yeah. A sister came up to me one time, she said brother I want to ask you a question, I said faddal. She said, brother, I got a boyfriend, I committed zina. I'm like, no, don't tell me. Sister, these things you should hide. These are scary things you should worry. Never talk about these things. Would you ki if you killed somebody, would you come walking up to me and say to me, brother, just two weeks ago I murdered somebody. I need you to get... Would you tell me to say that? Would you? Would anybody do that? No one would. Why would you talk about it? Even if you wanted advice, speak as a third person. Make it look like somebody else. Do you get my point? The reason she's asking like that is because, to be honest, the concept of zina is not as big as it used to be. Or the way it should be in the eyes of the people. It's normal. And this is something that is serious. Wallahi, it is serious. That a person would cut those boundaries and go and commit zina like there's nothing wrong with it. Where did that all come from? Imitating the kuffar and being like them. Exactly being like them. And what many parents don't understand is that when they say to their daughter, no, you have to finish your education, you can't finish your education. What they don't understand and they're not really coming to understand is that, listen, mom, mom, listen. Stephanie, who's in my class, and Judy, and, and the likes of them who are in my class, they got boyfriends. They don't want to get married anytime soon, but they got boyfriends. That's what they're doing. The brothers are like, mom, Mike, Smith, all of these guys that are in my class, they all got girlfriends. That's how they're surviving through their desires. That's how they are surviving through their desires. What do you want me to do? The only means that Allah has legislated from his marriage. You don't want me to do that. Do you get my point? These kuffar are reaching 30, 40. They don't, they don't get married because they got boyfriend and girlfriend. That's what they've chosen. So what are we doing? What is this your parent trying to push you to? Imitate the kuffar. Imitate the kuffar. Be like them. Think like them. Inna lillahi wa inna ila القاعدة الثالثة والأربعون The 43rd قاعدة أنهم يدعون الناس إلى إفراد الله بالتعلق تعبدا واستعانة ولزوم الهدي النبوي في كل شؤونهم ومن ذلك ما يواجهونه من عقبات ومشكلات في هذه الحياة ومنها علاج الصدمات النفسية أهل السنة والجماعة They call the people to single Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship and also to single Allah in asking for help to ask him and only from help and to be consistent upon guidance the prophetic guidance in all of your affairs be consistent upon the prophetic guidance and especially in the things that you encounter whether those issues are problems, communal problems, and also 
psychological problems that you feel you go through, Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah tell you, worship Allah and seek help from Him alone. Stay upon the Prophet's way, and inshallah, all of those things will be solved for you. Sisters are suffering, brothers are suffering, people are sending you. Sisters say, Look, I cut my wrist because of my depression, because of my anxiety. You see, brothers and stuff. Why? Because Luzum al Hadi Nabawi. They are not consistent upon the Prophet's path. They are also not worshipping Allah alone. They are not asking help from Allah alone. They are not. So they are facing aqabat and mushkilat. They are facing hardship, pain, agony in this world. Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah tell them to deal with this by connecting yourself to Allah. Worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala.